it turns out that you're more sensitive than I thought. I can't believe solar charging needs a complete fluke. Even though I read the manual, I made a massive assumption with this. All I needed to do was make a wish. It's Da Vinci time. So further to the uh, charging rundown, as I call it, uh, the previous video has been suggested in the top corner right now. Um, there have been Anderson port issues uh, with this particular solar generator and um, it's been all consuming for me, I'm afraid. Uh, I get a lot of questions uh, on this about uh, panels that work with this particular port. You know, uh, does it work? Have I got it working? Um, and in this video, we're going to cover that element of it specifically just to show you um, what I've gone through and how by pure chance that I actually managed to find and uh, break the back of the problem as such. So um, I'll start the story with, uh, with something that I was experimenting with. So like a lot of videos you see on um, YouTube, it was all about uh, trying out Wish, wish.com. So whether you have or haven't experienced this uh, particular, if you like, lottery, um, I uh, basically ordered what's uh, coming up on screen now. And I had no idea what was likely to turn up. So uh, when it did, I was a little bit surprised. It was nothing like what I expected. Um, and it wasn't the uh, wattage that was quoted. Uh, I didn't get the solar uh, controller that was in the box as well, or I should have arrived. Um, but I thought it was a cheap punt at having a go and seeing what actually, actually did turn up and whether it worked or not. And to my amazement, um, the following happened. All right, sorry, it's a bit windy today, so I'm hoping this isn't going to impact the sound too much on this. So I took the, uh, the solar panel here, as I got from Wish, and I did what I did before. So we've got the Anderson cable plugged straight into the battery, as we've done on the previous video. So I'm hoping that's all in focus. So literally, I just got the, the panel and I plugged it in. And nothing happened and what I did was I twisted the panel around and look at that I'm hoping you can see that but it's come on so it's woken up so I turn that back around towards the Sun I'm hoping you can see that that is actually climbing in watts so a complete fluke looks like I um, found uh, the reason why the internal MPPT charging circuit wasn't working on the main one. So I've got a trusty uh, multimeter here. It's not plugged in at the moment. So in the direct sunlight, this little panel here, if we plug those two in there like that, what do we get? I'm hoping that's visible in there. So we get 22.3 volts. And then if we flip it round, That drops that down to 19.8. Now, if I was to plug that in the battery right now, just bring it up. Oh, I can get it in there. And there we have it. It's switched on. So in direct sunlight, it won't switch on. And when it's got its back to it and the voltage is low enough, it kicks in fine. And then you can turn the panel back round and continue charging. I made a massive assumption with this. So after doing something that I really don't feel comfortable with doing, and that is reading uh, the manual, uh, the massive assumption I made was the range that's shown in the manual, which is uh, just coming up on screen. wasn't the problem. The problem was, or the problem with my battery I found is the startup voltage. So it's when you plug the Anderson port into whatever panel that you're using. Um, I think as it's already shown, it's uh, somewhere for my battery and for my setup, uh, somewhere between about 19 and 20.5 volts at startup. 
And if you can get that nailed in the first two to three seconds or so, it seems to just start. And once it's awake, then it pretty much stays awake. So we don't have the problem that we do or the problem that I had with the DC port if you're charging with or from a solar panel and it doesn't limit itself. It just goes up and down, up and down until it's effectively charged. And the other thing I've noticed as well is the um, time to charge, you know, the little countdown timer in hours on how long it takes. Uh, that's, that doesn't work or doesn't seem to work or as reliable when you're using the Anderson port as it is with a DC port or the um, PD uh, USB-C port. So enough of the chat, let's uh, just see how uh, I go about getting the uh, foldable 60 watts all powers panel that I've got working um, so that the battery can charge outside of the little Wish uh, solar panel I've already charged. So let's see how that goes and uh, how I do that. So after the weeks and weeks of uh, trying to get this particular issue sorted and the Anderson port not working and not doing anything, it all boils down to the fact that you just need to cover over, in my case, three of the nine cells which I've worked out uh, to bring the voltage down low enough for the internal MPPT charge circuit to do its thing and wake up so that you can continue to charge the battery. So uh, I have one battery here that's not, not working at the moment obviously it's not plugged in so I'll just show you how simple it is to make that happen and the key is to do it within two seconds of plugging it in one two and I don't know if you can see that it's on and it's charging at 32 watts so we like to give you the full picture or as much as we know on this channel. And I get a lot of questions asked about this particular solar generator. And even more so now that since we've gone into the uh, lockdown around the world regarding the coronavirus. And I think people just want to be prepared. And as for a recommendation on whether I'd recommend this particular solar generator, I think now the Anderson port issues understood. OK, it's still not perfect. It's still not, you know, 100% but it's a known element and it actually works. And what I've thrown at it so far outside of the charging arena, so just generally using it in day-to-day -day life, it's pretty good. I think for the size of the generator, I mean, it's so compact. Um, it's got lots of connectivity on it. The internal inverters worked great so far. Again, I'm, I'm working more on pushing that and releasing more videos on that. But for the price, um, I know that's going up as well, but the, for the price of the generator and what you get thrown in for this, I think it's really good value if you just look on Amazon and compare this with other generators that are available. Um, another thing I'd ask as well is, if you do like this and you do want to take the punt and actually get one of these generators, the links that you need are in the uh, description below. Now, I get a couple of quid and the channel gets a couple of quid every time that someone does go ahead and buy it and I'm not asking you to buy it it's entirely up to you but it does help out because actually buying a lot of this kit to do these reviews not just to actually use ourselves and myself it does actually take a lot of money and more than I realized and uh, Gordy uh, realized when we set this channel up so if you can and you do want to purchase this particular one if you just click one of those links it makes no difference to you but it does help us and it helps us continue with these reviews and I know you hear that a lot on other channels and that but it does make a difference so I really appreciate that so I do get uh, a fair amount of questions asked as well about connecting other kinds of solar panels up and to the Anderson port and until recently until I've sort of nailed this particular issue or understand this issue um, I've been asked about connecting it up to normal panels and uh, I've been saving hard, uh, I've been saving, it's just been paid, I've saved a few pounds and I've just bought this. So I didn't have time to include uh, unboxing that or actually getting that set up, but I'm uh, going to plan to do a video very soon to show you how to connect up using the MC4 connectors that come on this particular panel and directly hooking it into the Anderson port. Now we've got that bit working and then show you if it charges or not using the internal MPPT circuit. So that should be an interesting one. And I think this solar generator is just great because if you are going into um, sort of self-isolation or you using social distancing as it currently is in the UK, uh, this generator is great because you can just take it away, camp somewhere away from other people, get in your camper van or your caravan and just go somewhere else away from others 
and then just have a fully charged uh, solar generator ready to use when you need it. So I mean from that element, but it also works just as well for working at home because I'm finding myself now where I'm working at home more is the fact that during the day I'm using more power around the house than I would do normally where I'd normally be out at work. So that was another element I hadn't considered on this is just keep using that generator for powering more and more things. And also I have the other 288 watt hour version as well. So the 372 has really been working well in just general usage at home. I'm getting a lot of use out of it and it's really paying for itself already, I must admit. So that's, that's great from that element. We hoped you liked our video. All the links you'll need to be in the description below. Please like, share, subscribe and hit the bell icon. And stay tuned to Da Vinci.